War Room Sports is brought to you by Audible.com. Download a free audio book of your choice by going to audibletrial.com slash warroomsports. It was with great pleasure that we uh, welcome into the War Room my man, 50 Grand, uh, legendary D.C. baller, Lou White. Lou, what up? Lou, you there? Lou, you with here? us? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, what's, what's up, homie? How's everything? We're oh, good, man. man. Fabulous, man. We got uh, we got the War Room Generals in here. We're happy to have you. Uh, we're going to kick this thing right off. Lou, you played everywhere. <laughs> Share with yeah. us some of the places you've played, man. I've played in every league in the United States there is to play. Um, I've been in the Dominican Republic. I've been in South America. I've been in Europe. Um, the only place I haven't played basically is uh, in the Asian market, but I've been everywhere. And that's what's up. Hey, Lou, what's up? This is Dev, man. Uh, we actually we Hi, spoke yesterday. Doing, I'm good. Hey, how you doing, um, man? I'm 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 good, brother. Um, what I wanted to ask you is, uh, since you you have played in a lot of leagues around the globe, um, can you think back to like which one of these leagues you were in when you enjoyed your most success? Like like where were you when you were just absolutely balling out of control? Actually, um, balling out of control was in the ABA back when the ABA was seven teams and when there was over 35 pros in the league um is actually when Dennis Rodman was playing uh DeMar Johnson, Matt Barnes, Jamar Gennaro Pargo, uh Derek Dow, uh, Gino Carlisle, these guys were all on the same team, you know, those are rack of pros right there. Um Joe Crispin and uh Dewan Wheat and a lot of guys in there. It was only seven teams, but it was so competitive and um you know, that was when really balling out of control because the team that I was on, you know, really didn't have any players. So when I got there, they just turned me loose. And, you know, I just had some grade A footage, grade A film, played the entire game. And, you know, that spawned me on to some different um, contracts. But that was probably the the most fun that I actually had. Yeah, that's cool. I can see cool. how, you know, those teams could be stacked like that with all the players you name because if it's seven teams, you don't have that, that many places where you can spread around that talent. So the – Sound like they had right. a problem, wasn't it? Right, right. That, that 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 actually was a real fun league, really fun league. Yes. Yeah. So, so Lou, when you played in these other countries, was it difficult to deal with like the language barriers and the cultural differences? Like, how did you handle that? Well, you actually just had to play. You actually just had to pay attention to a lot of detail. Um, when you when you don't speak the language, you have to really pick up on people's body language. You really had to pick up on the tone of their voice, and you know it's it's your senses that kick in that make you aware when you don't speak the language. Um, you also that's basically when you don't have you know hands on one of the managers around or a translator for you. Then you know that's what you have to do. But your senses kick in and let you know when something's not right, and you know and you know as far as the money, everything is universal. Money is universal. We, you know, we all can count. So you can go straight to the grocery store, pick up this, 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 and this, and um, you know, when you get to the register, you know, she may be asking you pay paper on plastic. And, you know, you just point out one, and the money's universal, and you know, it's easy to survive that way. Yeah, yeah. I got. I'm sure when you showed them, or you showed them that you had money to pay for the things that you were looking for, they accepted <laughs> the fact that you could speak that language. <laughs> That's a universal language. Uh, that works That's everywhere. Right. No doubt. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, hey, Lou, this is Akil. Uh, nice, hey. nice to meet you, brother. All right. All right. Now, uh, it seems like basketball has taken you all over the globe. In any mm-hmm. league, who are some of the more notable players you've played with and against? You come on currently in the league, or do you mean well, retired well, well, or greats? Or... Well, all, 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 all of them. Like, all of them. Um, oh, I mean, just, just in, the story, just, brother. Just in just in general, I mean, like the little the pickup games with you know Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson. Those are those are probably the most memorable um, out of everything. Just realizing that Michael Jordan just doesn't shut up. I mean, he talks the entire <laughs> game. I mean, he talks the entire game. I mean, one day I went to the gym and we played six, seven games, and I just looked over at Rip Hamilton like, man, does he shut up? And they was like, no. 
And, you know, and it just continued from from there. He talked all the way in the ice room to where we were icing and electric stem, getting treatment to, the, to when we went to the pool. We went to the pool room and was playing pool, and he talked to death in there. And it was like, man. And then when he got outside around the public, he pressed the mute button. And I'm like, wait a minute. We just need to play in public. We just need to play in public because then he'll be quiet. You know, <laughs> so... You know, that that was probably the most memorable was going to having that time to play with uh Michael Jordan for uh, about three months, you know, Monday through Friday, you know, for summer was probably about the best. Um, I played with Magic Johnson in, in, in at UCLA when they were opening the gym up and you know, you can't you can't touch him. You can't put a hand on his waist or it's a foul. You know, it's kind it's, of, oh, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, it's kinda, yeah don't, don't get your hands off me, young fella. That's a foul. You can't put your hands on. You know, he did. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a good, that's a good impression right there. Yeah. Hey, yo, did, did Magic still run point? Did Magic still run point out there? Yes, he had to dictate the game. He definitely had to dictate the game because he trusted he will make the right pass regardless, you know. He doesn't really trust a lot of guys. Like, he'll, he'll like, if he get a rebound, if he gets a rebound, he'll give it to one of the faster guards and outlet and he'll direct traffic. No, 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 get to the middle. No, look to the wing. He'll direct traffic from the backcourt uh-huh. if he's if he's not going to run. You know, so it's, you know, it was it, you know the, the experience of all of this and just taking it all in because these are guys that we grew up watching. So it's like, yeah. man, I wouldn't trade any of this, you know, just to be around any of these guys, you know. So. Yeah. Hey, Lou, uh, this is Jimmy. Um, I have a question. Nice to meet you, by the way, good brother. Hey, um, hey, Jimmy. We hear you're going to play in Mexico soon. How'd this deal come about? I'm one of my teammates that I actually played with in Fresno, um, in the ABA. Um, he was he he was like, man, I haven't played with a point guard, a hard nosed point guard that plays both ends and is, un, and is very unselfish. And he was like, I know exactly what we need to win in this team. And then he called me and asked me if I've been playing. So. Um, you know, I gave him the information of my stats in the current leagues and things that I've been playing in, and he actually looked them up and was like, so you're in shape. And I was like, I am. And he was like, man, I got a job for you. Do you want to come? So, you know, it just happened, you know, things just happened to work out that way. And, you know, just, you know, happy to be blessed. That's how things happen, so. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, this is uh, Dev again. So, you know, before we get you out of here, we definitely got to let you promote anything you want to promote. We hear that you, you know, working with some kids, et cetera. So is there anything you want to uh, promote to the audience? Because we got a big following in the D.C. area, so, you know. Well, I, you know, as far as promoting and actually what I'm doing is, you know, I get with a lot of kids, um, and I mentor, tutor, and sports training. You know, I've been there. I I know what it's like to be that child and look up to someone who's actually played and, and actually made money playing. So, you know, having someone give back, you know, with your ears open, you know, that, that, that means a lot to the kids. And that's the, that's the type of the role model that I try to be. So um, I have I – have, all services available. Um, you can see my information at certifiedmove.com. Uh, C E R T I F I E D dot com, certified move dot com. So, right, so we'll, we'll, um, what we'll do is we'll put that on our um, Facebook page and and we'll tweet it out. You know, get people checking out the website and everything. But, hey, Dad, uh, so, real ooh. quick, Dad, real, okay. real quick, somebody somebody just came on our Facebook page and said to leave you a message. I don't know if you know this guy or not. His name is Patrick. He said to tell Lou that the Forty ers are garbage. So I don't know whether that's your team oh, and uh, somebody's message. Oh you. gosh. <laughs> yeah, that's been my de- that's been my team for years. I always thank you, Patrick Waring. Thank you for yeah, thank you for putting my team. Thank you for putting my oh, team so on you, this play. Uh, you're acquainted with Pat. <laughs> yeah, I, I am. You know, he heckles me on a regular basis, letting me know that my team is in the toilet. He that he does it every week uh, for the last eight years. <laughs> So it's been eight years running, and he's, he's, he, but he is consistent, and that's what I like about him. He lets me know my team is bad on a consistent basis. He's <laughs> you're the best up. for that. <laughs> you, yes, he's the best for that. But I am the last of the 261 49er fans that we have on this earth. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks. All right, well, Luke, thanks for joining us, man. We're going to have you on again probably when we have a longer uh, amount of time to talk to you. 
But it was great okay. to have you on. And, and man, it's great to be on, man. All right, man. Good luck to you in Mexico also. All right. You fellas take yeah. care. Yeah. All, All right. right. Take Thank you. Thank you. Kuwait is the war room with five nights at the round table. Five Philly guys, the first.